you're listening to the Academy podcast, a podcast for people who can but don't know how. This is where you get actionable steps to turn vague dreams into blissful realities. And I'm your host, Omoshala Victoria Wallaby. So let's get started. Do you ever think to yourself, I want to be able to impact lives, leave an imprint in this world? But you feel isolated, stuck, unclear on how to show up or get started. If you've answered yes to this question, I want to extend a very special invitation to you to join us on our upcoming workshop, the Courageous Confidence Workshop. This workshop is live where we get to work together on that call so that you can crack the confidence code, awaken your inner giant show up authentically, and attract your tribe. Head on over to offers.icandemy.org forward slash courageous. Again, it's offers.icandemy.org forward slash courageous. You'll find the links in the show notes below. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Academy podcast. I hope you're well. I hope you're doing great. I hope your year is off to a great start. I hope you have started to implement the plan that you created for this year, because without action and implementation, our plans are just wishes, right? We have to put those plans into action. Now, On the last episode, we talked about growth catalysts. What are some catalysts that can help us accelerate or advance our growth journey? On today's episode, we're going to be discussing growth success metrics, aka KPIs. What are some key performance indicators that tell us we are growing? There's a famous quote often attributed to Peter Drucker that says, You cannot improve what you don't measure. Peter Drucker is a management specialist and he helps companies, you know, improve, right? And this particular quote (laughs) has often drawn admiration and err of some people, right? Because at the end of the day, I know that there is we, we cannot measure everything in life, but it is absolutely important that we measure some things because whatever we measure we can manage, right? We can manage what we measure. So, and, and and when we measure these things, we're able to know whether or not we are growing, right? Now, I have identified for you on this episode, and these are things that I've also identified in my own life. There are three metrics that we should be focused on as we go through this growth journey. The first one is identity. The second is processes and systems. The third is outcomes. When I say identity, it sounds so vague. How do you measure identity? I'm glad you asked. Now, before we go into how to measure identity, let's first talk about what exactly is this identity of a thing. Now, your identity is the set of qualities and beliefs that makes you different from another person right? It is your distinctive quality and characteristics that makes you different from another person or group of people. It is absolutely important to our growth that we constantly evaluate these qualities, these beliefs that we hold, weeding out the ones that stunt our growth and adopting new beliefs and qualities that advance our growth, right? Identities are Basically, the way we see ourselves is the beliefs that we hold, the way we have been brought up, how we think, how we perceive the world, right? Those are things that we constantly have to measure, right? I know a couple of years ago, I used to be so judgmental. I had a very negative outlook towards life. And that identity was not serving me. I wasn't growing, Looking at life through that lens, what did I do? I had to reorient my mind, change my perspective because I could quickly identify that there is no way you would go through life with that kind of perspective and be able to succeed. I'm talking about the things that I wanted to succeed at, right? We all have different aspirations and different goals. Talking about myself, there there was no way I could carry on with life looking at life from that perspective. 
What did I do? Number one, I turned up the news. I don't want any negative news coming through my, my senses. I just want to focus on the positive. I want to focus on what God says about me, on the word of God concerning my identity. First, I had to reorient myself. First, changing my identity, the way I see myself, the things I believe to fall in line with the way God sees me and what God believes about me. Number one, so identity is important. And through that yardstick, you're able to say, okay, a couple of years ago, I used to think like this, but I no longer think like that. I am more in line with what God says about me. And that is how I'm able to measure my growth when it comes to my identity. So it is important that as we grow, as we evolve, we constantly evaluate the qualities, the beliefs, the behaviors, the habits that we have, removing subtracting the ones that stunt our growth and adopting new beliefs and qualities that have advanced our growth in that place. Now, I saw this amazing post on Twitter the other day. It was from a woman called Mary V. Macaulay. She's an author at 83. How amazing is that? And this was her post, I quote, I am now a published author at 83. Not too long ago, I couldn't even send an email. Very proud of myself, end quote. Look, she was able to know that she had, in order for her to become this published author, she had to acknowledge where she was. She could measure that, okay, just a couple of, not too long ago, a while back, I couldn't even send an email, let alone write and publish a book. You see what I'm saying? It is important that we grow. It gives us perspective. It reflects to us how far we have come. Otherwise, it looks like we are doing nothing, whereas we are doing a lot, right? It's me, for example, a couple of years ago, I didn't even know how to create a sales system, come online to build a business, but today I do. It shows growth. It shows progress. I now am able to do things that I was not able to do before right? And that is the power of consistency. That is why you need to go back and listen to the last episode so that you can get this one. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is processes and systems. It is important that as we grow, we have processes and systems in place that help us grow, right? Processes in this context are the outcome-based habits that we have. Processes or systems in this context is a series of actions or steps that we take in order to achieve a particular outcome. Say, for example, in the case of this author that I told you, if she had a desire to one day become a published author, one thing I know for sure is you will not become an author if you do not get about the business of writing, right? So if you know, because when you start from zero, you probably don't know how to write. She said she couldn't even send an email in her own words, right? So what did she do? It starts with first and foremost, learning about the system of the internet. How does it work? What is it? Number one, overarching system of the internet. Number two, what is an email, right? creating an email account for yourself. Number three, how do I even send an email? Number four, how do I write or structure an email? That's where it starts. When you get that that down, next thing is setting aside a time to write every day. Okay, family, let's face it. We've all felt pain. We've suffered the losses You know what it's like to want something so bad, but not see a part to its accomplishment. The question, however, is, do you know how to pick yourself up and move on despite what has happened? This is what I share with you inside of my new book, Good Medicine for the Crushed Spirit, a practical guide to helping you find purpose when adversity strikes. Inside this book, you will find personal stories, relatable biblical tales, and anecdotes that prove you are never alone in your despair. I will inspire you to turn pain, discomfort, disappointment, or setbacks into something positive that works for you. So if you're ready to change your life in meaningful and purposeful ways, get your copy of this book today and let the transformation begin. I remember I used to find writing so hard, 
so hard. I could speak my thoughts out. But when it came to writing my thoughts down on paper, it was so hard when I got started. But what did I do? I wrote imperfectly every day. Every single day I would write. A lot of things I wrote, you won't find them on the internet because I never published them. But it's important that I got into the habit of writing every day. The more I wrote, the better I became. And the more writing did not become a scary thing for me anymore, right? So that's what I mean by having processes and systems in place. And it is important that you're able to measure. When I look at my day one writing (laughs) and my day 365 writing, it's a drastic difference, right? That's what I mean by measuring your processes and systems, It is a series of actions or steps that we take in order to achieve a particular outcome. And it is only because I had this system of writing daily in place that I was able to publish my first book. Speaking of my first book, if you haven't read it, what are you doing? Head on over to Amazon right now and search up Good Medicine for the Crushed Spirit. That is my very first book that I published. I can guarantee that it will bless you because in the book, I talk about how you can find purpose in pain and adversity. Okay, continuing on the systems and processes. When we look at the word system, right? Systems are the interconnecting network that makes processes smooth. Like I said, I had a system for writing every day. When it came time for me to write my book, a lot of the things I was writing every day actually became content for the book. Because I had a system, it made the process of me writing that book smooth, right? So systems make processes smooth and habits effortless. So if you have a system, maybe you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is you say your prayers, you read your Bible, you brush your teeth, get dressed for the day, have a shower, and you sit in front of your computer, open up your writing pad and just start to write. Or if you want to start, if you are a content creator, for example, like I am, you sit in front of your microphone and you start to record, or you sit in front of your video camera and you start to record. Or if you want to create a new habit of maybe organizing your house, it starts with getting up in the morning and be about the business, have a system in place that encourages you. If you want to work out, I know I struggled with this one. And when I was looking for ways to help me be consistent in my workout, some people actually go to bed in their gym clothes at night so that when they wake up in the morning, there is no excuse (laughs) not to hit the gym because they are already in their gym clothes. They will just wake up, wash their face, I hope, or brush their teeth, I hope, and head out to the gym, right? So it is absolutely important that we have processes and systems that are measurable in place. The third one that I want to talk about is outcomes. Outcomes are the way a thing turns out, right? It is the result of an intended or unintended goal. So say, for example, you decide you want to be an author, right? And you don't even think anything of it. You just decide, you know what? I just want to write every day. I want to get down my thoughts on paper. Maybe I just want to journal every day. The unintended goal will be you will become a good writer over a period of time. The intended goal would be you will be able to write your thoughts down cohesively in a book for people to read, right? Outcomes can be favorable or unfavorable based on your intent and outcomes depend on on decisiveness and courage. So for example, if you set a goal at the start of the year, which a lot of us would have done going into a new year, at the end of the year, the outcome is whether or not you achieve the goal that you set at the start of the year. If you did not achieve the goal at the start of the year, it is because there were factors at play or you did not execute the plan that you had. If you achieved your goal, there were also factors at play that allowed you to achieve those goals or you were able to get past the huddles, right? By being decisive, having courage to try again if something failed that got you to that outcome because success is never an accident. Success is not a mistake, right? Now, now that we have talked about growth success metrics, I want to touch in on key performance indicators, aka 
KPIs. Yeah? A KPI or a key performance indicator is a set of measurable principles that help us navigate the road to growth and success. Now, so when we talk about growth success metrics, the metrics we should be measuring are the metrics we should be measuring are identity, right? We should be measuring our identity. We should be measuring our processes and systems, and we should be measuring our outcomes. Now, KPIs are the things that actually help us measure those things. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. KPIs is what will help you measure your identity. What is the key performance indicator? It is a set of measurable principles that help us navigate the road to success. So say, for example, you curse out people, like you are very quick tempered and you decide, you know what? This year, I no longer want to behave like that. I want to be more patient with people. One of the, and that is the, that is the, now you want to measure the identity, right? One of the KPIs you need is how to react to anger or when people piss you off, how do you react to that? That is a KPI right there, right? So what are principles there? If we understand that a KPI is a set of measurable principles that help us navigate the road to growth and success, what are those principles? Now, principles are a fundamental truth that serve as the foundation for our behavior. Without these principles, we are forced to react to everything that life throws at us, right? In other words, if somebody insults you, you know, you will react like you, 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 you will throw them a slap or two. But when you are principled, you have self-control, you can let it go, right? In other words, we become reactive. We be, sorry, not reactive. We, we, we become proactive instead of reactive, right? We don't become reactive. We become proactive. We are grounded. We understand who we are and how we react to things, right? So KPIs, right? What are some principles for good KPIs? Your goals, the obstacles, the diagnosis, risk, reward, design, and execute, right? Those are some principles for good KPIs. And on the next episode, we're going to be delving into this a little bit more. I just wanted you to understand in this episode that we need to measure certain metrics to let us know how we are doing on this journey of growth. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And until the next one, and until the next episode, keep on shining. This episode is sponsored by our very own Mogul Mindset Training. Are you ready to embrace new experiences, see opportunities where you thought there was none, and totally surprise yourself? Because you can by unleashing the power of your mind. Mogul Mindset System is a five-step system that helps you retrain your mind to work with you and not against you. So you can awaken your inner giant, 10x your impact, your income, and become truly unstoppable. The truth is, you, my friend, have a superpower, your creative genius. And I'm here to make that power multiply many fold so you can get past fear, self-doubt, and finally start working and thriving in your life and business. Ready to unleash your superpowers? I thought you would. Head over to mogul.icandemy.org. That's M-O-G-U-L dot I-C-A-N-D-E-M-Y dot O-R-G to learn more. So there you have it. Thank you so much for listening. And for more content like this, follow us on our social media handles. On Facebook, it's at Icandemy, the Facebook page. On Instagram, it's at Icandemy. Or come say hello over on my personal page. On Instagram, it's at Omoshola Speaks. On Facebook, it's Victoria Wallaby. Feel free to reach out, introduce yourself, say hello. I love meeting you. And if you have any stories that you feel will inspire another woman to action. I want to hear from you. I really do. I love hearing from you. Send me an email to hello at icandemy.org. So it's hello at I-C-A-N-D-E-M-Y dot O-R-G.